In this question, we are told to determine the value of 1 over square root of 1 plus the square root of 2 plus 1 over the square root of 2 plus the square root of 3. And this series basically just continues up till 1 over square root of 99 plus the square root of 100. And we have to determine the value of this without using a calculator. Notice that in this series, the numerators are all 1. And then the denominators are certs. They're really just going in numerical order. So let's focus on the fact that the denominators are certs. And let's look at other fractions with denominators being certs. If you take your calculator and you type 1 over the square root of 2. And I'm going to just use the square root of 2 because the square root of 1 is just 1. So that will just simplify to 1. But if you put this on your calculator, you will notice that the calculator will simplify this to the square root of 2 over 2. And what the calculator is actually doing is it is rationalizing the denominator. So currently, this denominator is an irrational number because it's a third. And so it rewrites this fraction in a way that this time the denominator is a rational number. And this is how this is done. So if we had 1 over the square root of 2, in order to rationalize the denominator, you're going to have to multiply this fraction by 1, but in the form of the square root of 2 over the square root of 2. And we do this because this is the only way that we can get that denominator to become a rational number, really just by multiplying this third by itself. And so 1 multiplied by the square root of 2 would just be the square root of 2, and the square root of 2 times the square root of 2 would be 2. But in the question above, as you can see, the denominator has two terms in it, which are both thirds all through. So there is a way to also rationalize this type of denominator. So if we had 1 over the square root of 1 plus the square root of 2, in order to rationalize the denominator, we have to think about what can we multiply this fraction by in a way that the denominator will become a rational number. And what we're going to multiply it by is not the square root of 1 plus the square root of 2, because this will not work. If you multiply that denominator by itself, it will not become a rational number. Because if we are multiplying two binomials and they are multiplying in, we're going to get one first and then the square root of one multiplied by the square root of two. Well, that square root of one is already one. So it's like one times the square root of two, which is just really the square root of two. Likewise, we have the square root of two times the square root of one, which will be the square root of two. And lastly, the square root of two times the square root of two, which will be two. And so here you see that the one and a two would give you three and we would also have the square root of 2 plus the square root of 2 giving you the positive 2 square root of 2. And as you can see, this is not a rational number. It's irrational. So we can't multiply it by itself. Instead, this is what we're going to multiply it by. We're going to multiply this by the square root of 1 minus the square root of 2. And what we're trying to do here is create an expression that would use difference of two squares to simplify this expression. So notice that the first and the second term really have the same number. We have one, the square root of one, and we have the square root of two, square root of one, square root of two, only that we have a positive and a negative here. And if we multiply these together, that giving you just a one, and then that giving you negative square root of two, that giving you the positive square root of two, and lastly, we have a negative two, because that's positive and that is negative. So looking at this, the middle terms would really just simplify to zero because they're really the same term, but just having the inverse operations. So we have one minus two, and this would just be equal to negative one. So that's actually what we're going to multiply by. But remember, we have to multiply this by one in the form of the square root of one minus the square root of two over the square root of one minus the square root of two. Now, because this process is quite tedious, I'm just going to simplify this process. So we know that if we have the exact same numbers in the bracket, but the only thing that is different is the fact that here we have a plus and here we have a minus, then you know you would just simplify it like this. Simply multiply the two first terms by each other, which will give you a 1, and then the two second terms by each other. Remember, that's a positive times a negative, which is a negative 2. And so that simplifies to negative 1. 
So we're just multiplying this by 1 in the form of the square root of 1 minus the square root of 2 over the same thing. And so this would happen. If we have 1 multiplied by this, anything times 1 just really stays the same. So we're just going to have the square root of 1 minus the square root of 2 over and this would become the square root of 1 times the square root of 1, which is just 1, and then minus 2. And so now we have the square root of 1 minus the square root of 2 over negative 1. And when we have to divide the negative 1 by these two terms in the numerator, just remember that they each have to divide by negative 1. So the square root of 1 divided by negative 1 would be the negative square root of 1. And the negative square root of 2 divided by negative 1 would give you a positive square root of 2. I know that this can simplify, but I'm going to just leave it like this so long, just so that all the terms are in the form of thirds. So this is really our first term in this series. Okay, let's see what will happen if we do the same to the second term. So we're going to multiply this second term by 1 in the form of the square root of 2 minus the square root of 3 over the square root of 2 minus the square root of 3. And so on top, on the numerator, 1 times this would really just stay the square root of 2 minus the square root of 3 over, and here we're just going to say the square root of 2 times the square root of 2, which is really just 2, and then the positive square root of 3 times the negative square root of 3 is negative 3. And then again, we get the square root of 2 minus the square root of 3 over 2 minus 3 being negative 1, and if we divide each term by negative 1, we get the square root of 2 divided by negative 1, which is negative square root of 2, and then the negative square root of 3 divided by negative 1, which is the positive square root of 3. So we just have to rationalize the denominator in each term. The first term is going to simplify to the denominator's value, but a negative of that, and then the second term in that denominator, and that one stays positive. Likewise with here, that became negative, and that stayed positive. So from this, we can already see that term 3, which was this, will now become the negative square root of 3, and we'll still have a positive square root of 4. So let's just rewrite this sum in a way that we have rationalized the denominators. So the series with the denominators being rationalized would look like this. This is the first term that we had, then the second term, and remember, they were just being added. So I don't really have to put that plus since we have a negative here. And this is the third term that we have. So just looking at this, since they only gave us the first three terms, and then the last term, then the last term would become negative square root of 99 plus 100. So this is just our first term, our second term, our third term, and that is the last term. Now, looking at this series, you will notice that some numbers in this series are going to simplify with each other and become zero. So if you look through this series, you see that we have the positive square root of two here, but then after we'll have the negative square root of two, and that would simplify to zero. Then we have the positive square root of three minus the square root of three, which will also simplify to zero. We will also have the positive square root of 4 minus the square root of 4, and that will simplify to 0. So this will keep on happening, but let's see where this is going to stop. Since this is the last term, let's just figure out what the term before this would look like. The term before this, because as you can see, they're really just going in numerical order, but the next term always has a part of the previous term and then the next number after it as a third. So the term before this would have been the negative square root of 98 and then plus the square root of 99. And you can see the same pattern going on with the first and the second term and the second last and the last term. So this just means the square root of 99 minus the square root of 99 would have given you zero. And here, before this, we would have had a positive square root of 98, which was simplified with this negative square root of 98. So really, all of these terms in between would cancel. And I apologize for writing that as 100. It's the square root of 100. So what's actually happening is these terms are canceling or simplifying and becoming zero. And what we're going to be left with is really just 
the negative square root of 1. That was the first term. And the last term, which was the positive square root of 800. So this is just the negative square root of 1 plus the square root of 800. Negative square root of 1. The square root of 1 is just 1. So we just have negative 1 plus the square root of 100, which is 10. And so this can be written as 10, positive 10, minus 1, which is equal to 9. And that's the answer. So all of that really just became 9.